Good morning, my dear friends. I am Prashant Mavani, and I warmly welcome all of you to study IQ. I hope you all are doing good. It's a beautiful morning today. I believe you all have enjoyed your Sunday, and I am sure that you all are uh, full of fuel that will carry you uh, for the whole week. Uh, the new week is on. Today is Monday. Let's have a positive start. Michael Jordan says, I can accept failure, everyone fails at something, but I can't accept not trying. Now, remember when a person like Michael Jordan, if you don't know who Michael Jordan is, then let me tell you that Michael Jordan is a legend in basketball world. And when a person like Michael Jordan, when he is coming out with this quote or when he is communicating with us, then make sure, remember this thing that he is uh, telling from experiences. He has gone through all this discipline and training and sports science and people are there to train him and everything. Then as well, you can see that he is saying that we do fail. Failing is very important, but make sure that you stand up. This is the message here and we fail on regular basis. If you observe your day minutely, then you will realize that we fail every single day. There are different things on which we fail on regular basis when it comes to controlling ourselves when it comes to basically achieving our targets and this happens with every single person on this earth as far as i know but make sure that you should not stop trying now let's see what we have got in the hindu newspaper basically in this editorial and op-ed page many articles as you can see mondays and tuesdays you find many articles now this one is readers editor it is more about Hindu newspaper it is more about journalism and things like that so uh, of course if you want to know more about it then go ahead as far as your exam is concerned you won't find anything important that important this is about cricket this is about uh, this uh, Commonwealth game now we have provided you a special video lecture on Commonwealth game so I'll leave it for you guys to have a quick glance over it but we have a very interesting and one of the most important article and there are high chances that you will find question on this sort of or you may be asked your opinion on how to sort of things or how to uh, you can say re-engineer governance in our country so here is a very important article called reimagining governance uh, we will go through it in detail then you have this one it is about syria yesterday we talked about this uh, syrian attack right that this basically more than 100 missiles were launched on three different locations in Syria by USA, France and UK. Very important article. The solution that it is providing is very important. Then you have this mandate and allocation. It is about 15th Finance Commission. The way things are going on, you know that there is a sort of uproar or you can say uh, southern states, particularly a couple of uh, days ago, we saw this uh, article written by Chief Minister of Kerala. After that, we have seen other states as well they are talking about particularly south uh, south south indian states that uh, they are not happy or what they are saying basically is that use 2000 uh, don't use this 2011's census data use 1971's census data so we will go through it a uh, very important article this one as well and then you have an article on Pakistan, particularly Nawaz Sharif. Uh, you will get a bit of touch of uh, his political history. At the same time, uh, it uh, this article ends with a very important statement as far as this politics of Pakistan is concerned. So, uh, let's move on. And here is a cartoon as well. Very interesting cartoon. I have not added this image in the slide today, but uh, if you go through it, and if you want, then please do make sure that you pass your valuable opinion in the comment section. I do uh, fancy this sort of, uh, and I do like uh, your view on this thing. And those of, uh, means out of you, many, many aspirants are, are coming out with uh, this opinion on this cartoon image. And I, I, I strongly recommend you guys to do it because it will improve your analytical skill. The way you analyze things, make sure you observe these minute details. And this will inculcate a, a sort of habit in you to pay attention to details and this is a very marketable thing when i'm saying marketable i mean to say that uh, attention to details is a thing that will help you immensely with your job as well with your career too and it will help you definitely with your studies as well now dear friends if you want to download the pdf of this lecture then this is my facebook page here this is my twitter handle from where you can get it 
and i have a good news for you if you are new to this discussion then uh, study iq provides pen drive and tablet courses for various different exams point number one and one of the most important point is that this pen drive and tablet courses are designed and developed by the best faculties of our country so the quality that you get is going to be top of the range the other thing is at present till 18th april you will get up to 50 percent discount on all our pen drive and tablet courses so this is the right time to get our pen drive and tablet courses or test series and other items make sure you make the most out of this up to 50 percent discount just in case if you have any question or queries check out studyiq.com you will have a chat support available on our portal and you can also give us calls on the numbers that you can see on your screen now let's uh, start our in-depth discussion with this war for war basically mr trump has said this thing in the past he has done this thing in the past as well he said that if chemical weapons are used in the civil war stricken country syria then usa will take or usa will take very strong or you can say tough action against syria or the people who are using it now yesterday i provided you with this uh, picture and um, again i have added just in case if you have not gone through it entirely so here you can see this alleged chemical weapons facilities you can see there are many here Aleppo is there al Shari uh, safira then you have other places as well hama and homes and damascus that is the capital of syria so it is believed that you have this a chemical weapons facility in different parts of syria now this strike that took place a couple of days ago more than 100 missiles were were launched in this three different locations that you can see on your screen right uh, and uh, as per this uh, statement coming from usa or uh, this pentagon they have said that they have finally gutted this chemical weapon program in syria the biggest challenge that we find here it's good thing right let me say you why it is good thing good thing if a government or if uh, a regime or maybe opposition parties or these protesters if they are using chemical weapons against people then they should be reined in you cannot allow this sort of dangerous weapons right you cannot allow free use of this uh, dangerous weapons you have to control all the people who are using it they should be controlled and they should be taught a lesson as well no doubt about it but the thing is this unilateral action or this one-sided action of usa and its allies like uk and france it is going to escalate this multi-sided conflict now multi-sided conflict when i say multi-sided conflict you have this bashar al assad right he is at present the president of syria he is holding this office of president of syria for a very long period of time now and usa uk and france if you if you observe the history of all this uh, civil war you will find that these three countries have always said that this bashar al-assad should step down new government should come in now let us uh, throw some more light on this background of political you can say setup of syria bashar al-assad is a democratically elected president of the country of syria at present or for a very long period of time uh, nearly seven years now uh, right uh, from last seven years this country is going from this civil war sort of situation and uh, nearly somewhere around four lakh four lakh plus people have died nearly half a million people have died because of this civil war this is not a small amount we are talking about four lakh plus people and we have seen many sad pictures as well in the past in the media about this civil war that is going on in syria now there is no authority uh, in the hands of usa uk or france uh, to ask a dem democratically elected president to step down the other thing is this bashar al-assad is supported by iran as well as russia now if you can understand the gravity of the events that are taking place here because uh, iran is a shia country uh, so is uh, bashar assad's regime you have uh, sunni people as well living in in syria and then you have this isis and other groups uh, they are 
they are they term themselves as sunni group even though one thing that we should keep in our mind is that uh, they are not associated with any religion at all right uh, terrorists are terrorists they don't have any religion but that's what they are claiming that they are fighting for sunni people so basically they are attacking shia regimes or shia people in in syria now russia is supporting bashar al-assad and because of this thing you find this uh, united nations security council's permanent members three permanent members are against bashar al-assad and one is supporting and uh, so basically this is the reason this is the background of this multi-sided conflict just in case if you are not aware about it now the thing is a uh, last year as well or within a year we are seeing this uh, this uh, bombardment or you can say this usa uh, taking taking this missile route on syria on president bashar al-assad uh, last time uh, they fired 59 cruise missile and at that point of time they said that uh, things were sorted out again this time as well this pentagon is saying that syria's chemical weapon programs has been gutted or destroyed for good or destroyed for ever but the thing is if uh, things are or if they have already destroyed this thing earlier on then why we are seeing this second strike the other thing is the decision or this uh, you can say this uh, this stand or this action that was taken by usa and its allies they have acted uh, before uh, this thorough investigation report from organization of prohibition of chemical weapons opcw very important this is the logo or picture of this OPCW, it is an intergovernmental watchdog, right? Just keep this thing in mind. It is an inter uh, watchdog, and basically, it looks after this chemical weapons and other things. So, before OPCW's thorough investigation report, these countries have taken an action, and this thing has raised a serious question as well. Now, the thing is. They acted based on their intelligence agency's report. Last time as well, we have talked about this thing when USA attacked this Iraq. At that point of time as well, the CIA and this MI6 of UK, uh, they were saying that Saddam was having chemical weapons or this nuclear weapons and things like that. And he was associated with Al-Qaeda and other things. But later on, these countries have officially accepted that uh, their intelligence agencies were mistaken their reports were not right and something uh, similar could take place or might have happened this time as well so countries should wait for this thorough opcw report the other thing is they are they have basically floated international law as well things should go ahead when once they get this green signal from united nations security council if they are member of or permanent member of United Nations Security Councils, these three countries, that does not mean that they can take action without green signal or a firm decision by UNSC. Uh, but you know very well that uh, you have Russia as well on board. So Russia will never allow this sort of attack. So this could be a reason as well. But here we have to keep this thing in our mind that if at present, you know, you have these groups in Syria, they want they have weapons in their hands and they have access to weapons and other things so at present if you are asking this bashar al-assad's regime to come down then what will happen is that those millions of people who are at present reasonably safe they will become vulnerable as well the other thing is and one of the most important line that i find in this article is that we don't need this sort of military action or unilateral military action what we need is aggressive multilateral diplomacy. This is the most important thing. We need sound diplomacy. You have problems with or USA and USA and Russia, they do have problems, but their problem should not, they should not continue their animosity or this Cold War sort of thing on some other people like people of Syria. If you want, if you are here to find some solution, then come and discuss things on table, but don't take your revenge and vengeance uh, on each other on someone else the playground so don't take this sort of things or don't continue your politics in this country of syria we need sound diplomacy and if we can work if this world powers or this U united nations permanent countries 
all right unsc is permanent countries uh, if they work together with other countries and of course they have to take on board uh, this Bashar al-Assad as well and if they do that then we can sort out this problem moving on reimagining governance one of the most important article as i said now if you are following pib analysis press information bureau analysis uh, that is delivered by me on regular basis uh, in hindi and english then we have talked about this aspirational districts program earlier on as well uh, we have discussed and analyzed it uh, i believe thoroughly and at that point of time i told you this thing if you have followed this thing this pib analysis i said that this word itself indicates that when you are saying that this districts are not backward basically let me throw some background information now government of india right uh, has decided that uh, there are basically 115 backward districts in our country right they are backward uh, entirely or or if you if you have a bird's eye view on different aspects of life like health education infrastructure and other things then you will realize that these districts are backward now what government has decided first of all this terminology government has termed them as aspirational districts and government strongly believes and this is right as well that if, if even if you go in a backward district that is not having good health facility education facility or this uh, this basic infrastructure and other facilities that does not mean that there are no specialities at all in this particular uh, so-called backward districts now when you call them backward districts what you are basically focusing on is uh, in a very simple terminology you are saying that the glass is half empty or the jar is ha half empty rather than that when you say that or when you are saying this or terming this districts as aspirational districts what you are saying is you are sending the signal that the jar is half full you know the same thing but it depends on how you are looking at it and this is the thing that matters uh, it, it's it's your it's your viewpoint here you have this line i have added this one this this attitudes and narrative matter for outcomes and this applies with your governance as well this applies with your personal life as well we do discuss this positive in in our positive start we do discuss this sort of things isn't it and this is a pure science as well that if you if you are doing something and if you if you believe or if you tell yourself that no this is not going to be right then that will definitely not go right but if you say if you say positive words even if things are a bit challenging then the result will be different so this is a very good thing that is done by government that rather than terming them backward districts government has termed it or them as aspirational districts program and uh, under this adp government has also said this thing that youngsters young ias officers young sps and young this administrative officers right if they want or uh, all this uh, you can say young fresh uh, people with uh, innovative ideas and you know uh, this sort of uh, can do it kind of attitude people or this officers they will be placed here and they will be in they will be made in charge of this thing so that you have new and positive vibe here so this is a background information which you don't find in this article but now i believe it would be much easier for you much smoother for you now so this program the good thing about this program this adp is that this program is informed by the failures of the past so we are learning or we have took lesson from uh, from our past failures very important thing uh, that or very important change uh, that will be applied on this program that we have learned something from our past the other thing is this program is going to use this contemporary vision of how public services are best delivered to those who need the most rather than fo focusing on the past thing the other thing is the way things will be executed very important and this example you can use in other other questions or other you can say sphere of our administration or governance what government has decided under this adb program is that you will have senior officials from union government you will have uh, officials from state government and then you will 
basically everyone will come on board they will be known as prabhari officers we'll talk about this thing as well but you will have this three tiers you will have uh, union government you will have state officials and then you will have this district officials or you can say grass root level officials and together they will work as a team it's not like i'm your boss and or you are my boss no they will work as a team and this is the best thing that we find in this uh, this particular program now they are going to use this composite index uh, they are going to use most uh, or the latest uh, uh, latest figures on health education uh, basic infrastructure socio-economic caste census and rather than focusing on the gaps they are going to focus on achievements like uh, what are the outcomes how much we have achieved and things like that uh, another strange but very interesting and a good thing is that uh, there is no financial or special financial package for this ADP uh, because uh, the government uh, believes and this is right as well that spend better than spend more just giving more money for this ADP is not going to sort out problem there are many schemes uh, that are run by central government and they have this flexible spending component so you can use say for money that is uh, for education purpose for particular scheme you can use it for other items as well as far as it is falling in line with uh, for uh, as far as it is for the development of your district right so this sort of uh, flexibility is provided under many schemes many central schemes uh, but so far we have not used it uh, uh, we have never used it or never leveraged this flexibility but now government is going to do it under this adp now the three tire which i was at years that i was talking about is this uh, prabhari that is in charge officer from the center prabhari that is again in charge officer from the state and then you have this district administration they will work as a team and the reason why need, we need them as a team and i have strong logical points as well here for you first of all see if you want to implement something then you would require this district administration you cannot decide everything at top level and and then you expect uh, that uh, this is central level this is your state level and this is your district level you cannot expect that a central government will take decisions and uh, something it will dictate to state and state will take its own decision uh, using a bit from center and then asking the district or the local level to implement it this is not how it will work on and this thing has failed so far right so what we need we need a team and district administration will implement all the things state say for example just one example is here if you have some shortage of teachers in one particular district or this adp then what state government can do when it is part of this adp state government can can borrow teachers or can transfer teachers if you have uh, one district that is having excessive teachers then this can be transferred to this uh, this uh, aspirational district called Y. so this sort of decisions can be taken swiftly only when you have this prabhari or in charge officer of state level and say for example if you are talking about financial inclusion of people in your district then you would need uh, nationalized banks and for that you would need center so this is a very good way of uh, doing things very smart idea you can say and uh, the spirit of cooperation needs to be supplemented by this culture of competition and that's what they are going to do they are going to create this competition by by sharing this uh, positive data when i say positive i don't mean to say that they are going to play around with the data or they will add or they will try to you know uh, add scores in this data no they will rather than showing that this state or this particular district is bad what they will do is that they will share their achievements and this will create a sort of competition hopefully uh, one more interesting change that we find is this adp program has opened door for civil society as well so corporate social responsibilities many ngos they will become part of uh, executive executing things they will become part of uh, decision making process and this will basically add more boots on the ground and you will have more heads uh, to to fight against some problems real-time data collection and sharing this real-time data so that we are targeting uh, right people at the right time and uh, in this way this adp is a big pilot project and hopefully 
this will work and the lessons that we will learn from this ADP can be implemented in other schemes as well. Now another important article on Pakistan. If you observe this tenure of Nawaz Sharif, then what we find is that in 1999 he was overthrown by military dictator Parvez Musharraf. He was charged for this hijacking Pakistani airline. At that point of time, 14 years of jail and two crore rupees fine, and he was disqualified for 21 years. But back in 2007 he was back again resurrected and he came back in Pakistan he was in exile basically he came back in Pakistan when uh, Parvez Mushraf was the president but at that point of time in 2007 he was very weak Parvez Mushraf was weak at present he is himself on exile and uh, he took part Nawaz Sharif took part in election in 2013 and became prime minister for the third time now uh, four years in his office Supreme Court has disqualified it based on this article 62 1 F of the Constitution of Pakistan it is basically saying that you need to have a clean person a right person a sagacious person uh, as a member of uh, Parliament and uh, Nawaz Sharif is not as per the Supreme Court because he was indulged he was associated with a corruption case and things like that so he's not basically honest as by as per Supreme Court so he is disqualified for life now Nawaz Sharif is back again when I say back again he is conducting these rallies and uh, this jalsas in different parts of the country even in areas where he was not quite famous he is doing these rallies and jalsas over there as well like uh, Khyber Pakhtungwa area and other places so the bottom line here is that see he is one of the most successful you can say uh, he has been more successful uh, elected national leader since uh, since 1985 and if you compare his own term then you will find that he has improved quite a lot and as far as uh, if we if we go back in the history then as well we have seen that he was banned for 14 years but he was uh, back in 2007 he's never been in jail when I say never been in jail I mean to say that he has not been in jail for this many years he was in exile so at present right he is back and he's doing all these rallies and other things and this is the most important statement that I was talking about that the only constant in Pakistan Pakistani politics is that it is foolish to make predictions don't think that Nawaz Sharif is gone forever he may come back after a couple of years anyways his brother is going to take over at present it looks like that now mandate and allocation it is about 15th finance commission and uh, this presidential term of reference uh, which is basically there you know this whole issue of uh, population uh, or allocating resources based on 1971 uh, population this is a big issue now the thing is public services have to be provided on current issue the best solution that we have is used most recent real-time data rather than uh, having your argument on 1971 and 2011's uh, population the other thing is uh, the central government is basically nudging the commission this 15th finance commission it is saying that uh, leave a larger fiscal space uh, for implementing national development programs like new india 2022 so give more or make sure that more money is there in the hands of central government and uh, when you do this sort of thing when central government is nudging this commission by a president then basically you are trying to trying to intrude into this state subjects as well and this is not right for federal structure now the money that you are giving to state is not a money for charity right it is the right of the state to claim money so this is the main theme of this big article that you find in today's Hindu and performance must be built into the implementation of scheme and not into the tax devolution formula. This is the most important statement that don't focus just on tax devolution. Focus on implementation, how we can improve implementation of scheme. There are many schemes out there. Uh, money has not been utilized. Uh, of of the, of the schemes and you find the uh, crores and crores of rupees are just left in the bank and we can apply 
this sort of this three tier system or this ADP program, we can learn something from this pilot project that is going on and we can implement it in different parts and in different at different levels and then we can improve this this implementation of program so this is something that we have to learn or the government should state as well as central government should learn from moving on to important news item kathwa outrage has united nation has been said by chief minister of mehbooba mufti, mufti this uh, two bjp ministers resignation has been uh, has been accepted A very sad news coming from again surat a mutilated body of 11 year old girl uh, with 86 injury marks and it has been found that uh, she was repeatedly sexually assaulted so i feel so sad when i hear this sort of news uh, this indicates that it is means just laws or this tough law and death penalty is not going to help us at all if there are people who are pedophiles then we need to identify them if you th see this sort of behavior of course we have to be very careful no innocent person should be should be termed like but once someone is found of uh, doing this sort of misbehavior or conducting this sort of horrific acts then they should be named and shamed as well uh, in england what they do is if someone has been a pedophile or if they have been you know if they have passed a jail term for this sort of activities of course not murders and rapes but many times doing some sort of you know touching small kids at a wrong place and things like that if if they go through this jail term and when they come back and if they are living in a particular society then the whole society is informed about that particular person that he is having this sort of history and this will you know it will it will basically create this awareness in our society but here we don't have an the sad thing is many a times we don't find uh, this sort of cases or they are registered by the people because most of the time most of the time what we what we see is someone from within the extended family someone who has this access to younger kids uh, they are the ones mostly who who are indulging in this sort of activities moving on red flags uh, eases mha official out now, one official from this Ministry of Home Affairs has said that uh, these private agencies are using or they are taken on board in this uh, this control room. Uh, that is new emergency response control room for disaster. And uh, when he came out with this statement, he is being transferred. So this is a uh, this is a matter of concern. Like what's going on? Is there anything fishy about this thing? We have to wait and watch if we find. I I think. Uh, I think we may find, uh, not that sure, but we may find an editorial on this thing or article, maybe later on, if not tomorrow or in near future. Then Pakistan denies pilgrims councillor access. Uh, this is a this is a violation of uh, uh, Vienna Convention, and it is also a clear, uh, you can say this uh, diplomatic discourtesy that is performed by by Pakistan and uh, modi is going to visit uh, is going to visit uh, norway and uh, he's going to visit uh, i think he's going to visit sweden i beg your pardon sweden and uk in uk of course he's going to attend this uh, commonwealth heads of uh, government meeting and uh, he is also trying to he will try to improve bilateral relations it means we have wonderful bilateral and people to people contact between india and uk but still we need to take it to next level then you have this uh, post brexit era as well that is going to come so things means things that we discussed this time will be uh, will be important then we have this india to ally with china we are going to to stand by with china or we are going to be a friend with china as far as this asian premium is concerned now what is asian premium this organization of petroleum exporting countries they charge extra or higher price to countries like india and china or countries uh, from asia some countries from asia they charge them higher prices of this oil that they sell us and they are giving some sort of concession to to countries like like usa and other western countries so this is something that is unfair isn't it so we are going to uh, take a stand on this Asian premium and that's everything in today's discussion dear friends uh, these are your answers I have two uh, 
geographic based questions for you and make sure you make the most out of this 50 percent discount and if you have learned something from today's discussion please don't forget to give us your like subscribe to our channel share this lecture with other people i'll see you all soon jai hind